Okay, in this first question, now this first question is actually called a complex fraction because you have a fraction here, but then you have two expressions added together in the denominator. So what I tell students when you come across complex fractions is to just ignore the numerator. So go ahead and rewrite 1 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 3, and let's deal with this first, okay? Now you should notice they do not have the same denominator. So what's the common denominator for this problem? Very good. All right, so I'm going to write x plus 2 times x plus 3 as a common denominator. All right, so that means that my first expression, I need to multiply by what to the top and the bottom? x plus 3. Okay, what about this one over here on the right? x plus 2. All right, and we talked about this in section 8.3. All right, so if you distribute in the numerators, you have x plus 3 times 1, so that's going to be x plus 3, and then x plus 2 times 1, which is x plus 2. Okay, add your like terms in the top, and you get, not x squared, you're adding 2x plus 5. Now, this would be the answer, except for the problem was not just the denominator. The problem was 1 divided by all of that. Yeah, Leslie? Um, so, what if you put 2x? So, Kylie said x squared, but x plus x is 2x. x times x is x squared. Okay, so this numerator, I haven't accounted for yet, right? It says 1 divided by. So I'm going to write that down. 1 divided by this. Right? Because all of this right here is the same as my denominator. Now, do you remember when we talked about division, what I should do with this operation? Change it to multiplication and do what with the second one? Flip it. So the answer is actually going to be x plus 2 times x plus 3 over 2x plus 5. That's my answer. But when I looked at my answer choices, I didn't see one that was that answer. So which answer is it? It is B. Because x plus 2 times x plus 3 distributed is x squared plus 5x plus 6. But I think you should see in the answer choices it can't be any of the other ones. It, it's not. It's challenging, but that's not the hardest one we're going to Questions? Yeah. Because if you pick the first one, you haven't actually done one divided by that. Right? Remember, when I just did the bottom, I got that. But it's one divided by this, so you have to flip it. Yeah, it's one divided by all of that. OK, let's go number two. It's all on the key, it's already posted. Don't you worry. Number two. So number two says, what value of x is going to make this function undefined? Now when you read undefined for this unit, what are you thinking about? Zero where? In the denominator. So all you have to do for this problem is set the denominator okay. equal to zero. I haven't said anything about factoring yet. Are you okay, Frank? Because I'm recording. It'd be great if you could just knock that off. I am serious. Great. So when I look here, all right, I notice this says x minus 5 squared. All right? If I want to distribute that, then I'm going to do x squared, which is x squared. Yeah. <laughs> then now watch this. This is fun. What's x times negative 5? 
negative 5x. But because I'm squaring it, I need to double that. I need to double it. Negative 10x. And then what's negative 5 squared? Plus 25. Now, if you have no idea what I just did, all right, what I just did is called Pascal's triangle, which you have heard in this class before. But you could have just written it like this if you wanted to. Right? And distribute. Hello, oh. Adrian Lee. You guys good? All right? Because I've done one problem. You haven't really been paying attention. It's number two. All right? Tomorrow is going to be really hard when you do these. So try to help yourself today. Yes? Five squared. Negative five squared is 25. <laughs> Hmm? Great. X times negative 5 is negative 5x. Negative 5 times x is also negative 5x. So negative 10x. I don't do that because I know how to expand this in my brain without any help. Pascal's triangle. All right, what's 4 times x minus 5? Excellent. And then I'm going to write that plus 4. Okay? I only have one x squared, so I'm just going to rewrite that. What about the x's? What's a negative 10x plus 4x? Good, minus 6x. And what about my constant numbers? 25 minus 20 is 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. So if you factor this, what are two numbers that multiply to give you 9? And add to give you negative six. Three and three. Negative Not three and three. Negative three, and three. But negative three and negative three. Since there's two of them, I just write it squared. So what's going to make this zero? Very good. Positive three. Yeah, you can write x minus three times x minus three. Yeah. Would it, though? Because if you made that 5, that would be 0 squared, which is 0. I agree. Then 5 minus 5 is 0. That's 0. But 0 plus 0 plus 4 is not 0. All right? Everybody good on number 2? Yes. Maybe I'll. Okay, if you can't factor it, then you can use other ways to solve. How have we solved quadratics when we couldn't factor it? Do you remember? From October? It's called the quadratic formula. Right, the song. Don't worry, it's coming back. Oh, we'll sing it very soon. Okay, that one, yeah. Now, number three. Number three is going to be a little bit weird because you've done this, but they kind of do it backwards on the SAT. So it says, here's an expression. Which one of these is the same as that? Now, the, the answer choices that don't make a whole lot of sense to me are A and B. Because if you look at A and B, they don't have a variable. So how am I going to have, I don't understand how that will ever be the same. All right, so my first thought is, well, there's not going to be A and B. Okay? So now C and D look similar. Right? You have a number, 5, and then minus an expression. So how do I subtract these rational expressions? What do I need? A common denominator. So what does this denominator need to be? Nope. X plus 3. So I'm going to multiply, I'm just going to cross out the C, times X plus 3 over X plus 3. OK. So what is 5 times X plus 3? Very good. Is this going to give me that? Well, you should be able to see. Is this going to give me that? It's not. It's going to give me 5x plus 13 in the top. You see that? I need 5x plus 13 in the numerator, which is not 5x minus 2. So it's not C. So the answer is D. Well, let's show you the work so you know why. Same process here, but for D, what's 5 times x plus 3? Right, that didn't change. But this time, I'm subtracting 17 in the numerator. So when you do 15 minus 17, you get 
negative 2. So that's why it is D. Do you guys see how that's kind of backwards? What I taught you guys was to do the subtraction, and you get that as your answer up at the top. They're having you on the SAT go backwards. So it's a little tricky. Frank, yeah? This subtraction. Well, I taught you guys how to subtract rational expressions without common denominators. All right, but this problem is saying, hey, here's the answer. Which of these would give you that? So it's kind of going backwards. Yes, Alonzo, question? OK. Number four. Now, number four, you could solve this the way that I've been teaching you to solve rational equations. All right, but you'll notice you have one rational expression on the left of the equal sign and one on the right. What is this called? It's a proportion. So if it's a, no, if it's a proportion, go ahead and just cross multiply and set those products equal to each other, all right, like you did in middle school. So 5 times x plus 20 is the same as 15 times x. That's what we're saying, all right, and that's true always in mathematics. All right, so I'm going to distribute the left and get 5x plus 100. And on the right, I have 15x. If I move the 5x over with subtraction, I get 10x equals 100. Or I wrote 100 equals 10x. So what is x equal to? 10. And so a lot of students have been picking A. But it asks, what is x over 5? So it is 2. So just don't just gloss over that, right? That's a big deal on the SAT where they're always trying to mess you up. You did a lot of great work, but then you picked the wrong answer. Okay, so just be aware. Okay. Any questions on four? Yeah, that one I think is one of the more straightforward ones here. Okay. Back to one that's not straightforward. Are you okay, Camilla? Okay. Number five. Now, number five says, kind of like number three, hey, I've got an expression. Which of these is the same? Now, at least A and B have the variable. So I thought, okay, if it's going to be A or B, then maybe if I factor this, I'll be able to cross out, and then it's left with one of these as my answer. So I just took a quick 10 seconds and factored. What do 4x squared and 6x have in common? 2x, and what's left? Very good. What about the denominator? What do 4x and 2 have in common? 2, and what's left there? Oops, sorry, 2x plus 1, actually. All right, so I realized when I factored that the only thing I could cross out was those 2s in the front, right? These 2s right here. So do you see this in your answer choices? Do you see that in your answer choices? No, the answer is no. So I thought, OK, that was a lot of great work, but not helpful. All right? Well, I'm just saying. And that also tells me it's not going to be one of these, bless you, because I wasn't able to cross out common factors to get something smaller. So then I'm like, all right, well, this feels a lot like number three then. I'm going to have to subtract and figure out which one ends up being my answer. OK? So what do I need to be in the denominator for these first terms in C and D? Very good. So I went ahead and multiplied the top and the bottom by 4x plus 2. OK, so let's do it for C. What is 4x times x? 4x squared. And what is 4x, excuse me, 2 times x? 2x over 4x plus 2 minus 2 over 4. Okay, is this going to give me my original problem? Now, it's going to give me 4x squared plus 2x minus 2, so I know it's not c. All right, so I know the answer is d, but let's show you why. What's 4x times x? 4x squared. This is where it gets tricky. My brain is going to do 4x times 1 and think 4x. And then 2 times x, which is 2x, and then I add them together, and I get 6x. 
And then 2 times 1 is 2. So when I write this, minus 2 over 4x plus 2, what happens to these 2s? They go to 0. So I'm left with 4x squared plus 6x over that denominator, which is the problem. So it's D. Again, it's kind of like backwards from what you've been doing. <clears throat> Questions on five? We've got five more to go. Okay, number six. Now, number six I wrote on here because it is a rational function, right? You've got a variable in the bottom. But I don't think you actually need to know anything about rational functions to answer this. You just plug in negative 1 where it says x. That's all it's saying. f of negative 1 means to plug in negative 1 where it says x. So that's all I'm going to do. Okay. So what's negative 1 squared? Positive 1. What is a negative 6 times a negative 1? Positive 6. And what is negative 1 minus 1? Negative 2. So you have 1 plus 6, which is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10. So this is 10 over negative 2, which is the same as negative 5. So again, I don't think you needed to know anything about rational functions to solve this. Questions on number 6? Okay, number seven. Number seven. All right, now it's not a proportion yet, but I can do one little thing to make a proportion. If I put this x plus one that doesn't have a denominator over one, then I can cross multiply and set those products equal to each other. So I'll get two equals x plus one times x plus one. Okay, so let's see if you can do this. We know x times x is x squared. What is x times 1? x, what is 1 times x? So that's going to give me plus 2x. All right, and then 1 times 1 is 1. Now I see a quadratic, so what, I want, what do I want to do to solve this? And before I can factor it, I need to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to move this 2 over here. Notice, like I said last week, my x squared is positive, so am I moving that? No, no I'm moving the 2 over with subtraction. So I'm going to get 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 1, because 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Now here's the problem, guys. I would factor this, but there are no factors of negative 1 that add to 2. Right? The only factors of negative 1 are 1 and negative 1. And those add to 0, not 2. So I can't factor. So this is where you're going to use the quadratic formula. I would not. I would not use the quadratic formula. I would use completing the square. All right? But I don't think any of you remember how to do that. Maybe a few of you. So. That is what you need to complete the square. Very good. But I'm going to show you that in a different life. So right now I'm going to show you the quadratic formula. All right, so if you've seen the song very quickly, x equals down to b plus minus the square to b squared minus 4c all over 2a. Exactly. Check out my previous videos. All right, so we have the opposite of b first. So the opposite of 2 is negative 2. Plus or minus the square root. Uh, b squared, so 2 squared. You absolutely could do I would, but most of my students do not remember it, Kylie, so I'm not going to even try it. I'll, I'll do it another time, like maybe, uh, I don't know when, but sometime. Okay, so 4ac, so 1 and negative 1. It's a good thing I'm recording, so this way I can watch this tonight. And over 2 times A, which is 1. She's away. You're forgiven. All right. 
What is 2 squared? 2 squared. What is 2 squared? 4. four. And then I have 4 times 1 times negative 1, which is negative 4. But because it's already subtraction, subtracting a negative is really addition. So you get 4 plus 4, which is 8. So this is the answer. I mean, we have two of them. All right, but you can simplify 8. What is the perfect square that's in 8? It is 4. So you're going to write negative 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. Twos are wild. All right? That if you remember from October, man, it's been a long time. This negative 2, this positive 2, and that positive 2 can all be divided by 2. So your answer is negative 1. There's no need for i. There's not a negative inside. Your answer is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. So a lot of my students, when I wrote that, think, oh, the answer is going to be A. Because they see, oh, they see something that looks like that. First of all, that's wrong. But if you look, it says, what is the value for x plus 1? Well, this is x. So if I take this and put it into there, that means I need to add 1 to it. When I add 1 to this, what happens to my negative 1? It goes away. So the answer I'm looking for is either the positive square root of 2 or the opposite of square root of 2. There's only one of those that's there. B. It is B. And man, that question is challenging. Wait, can you tell us what the question is? Yeah, real fast, fine. I'm going to do the way that I would do it. So I'm going to go super fast. So I'd move over the negative 1 to make positive 1. All right, if you do B over 2 squared, your B is 2. What's 2 divided by 2? 1, what's 1 squared? 1, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I got x plus 1 squared equals 2. And if you take the square root of both sides, you get x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 2. If you move that 1 over, you get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. Right? So again, I don't do that because students forget it. They don't know how to do it. <coughs> The auctioneer is the word you're looking for. Excellent. All right. So let's go on number eight. It's going to be okay. Number eight. Now, number eight is almost a proportion. If I make this over one, it's a proportion. So cross multiply, set those products equal. You get eight times one equals x times 160, or eight is equal to 160x. How did you get rid of the 160? Divide, so x equals five hundredths. And that one's middle school. My son's favorite Harlem Globetrotter is named Money. So there you go, easy money. Because he's got a million dollar smile. Not my son, money. That's why they call him. <laughs> my son has like multiple chipped teeth, so not a million. Uh, like one of his teeth is like going gray because he's hit it so many times when he's fallen. Don't worry, those are practice teeth. All right, number nine. Number nine. All right, so we're going to do cross products again and get 2 times x equals 2x times x minus 3. So the right side is going to be 2x squared minus 6x is equal to 2x. I see a quadratic. Do you see how it's positive over here? So am I touching that? No, I'm moving this 2x over to that side. So I can get 0 equals 2x squared close, but it's going to be subtraction, Aviana. So a negative 6x, and then just ignore that nonsense, is a minus 8x. Do you need me to show you? Or are you good? No. Okay. Now, do you guys see how there's no constant? You see how there's no constant? So am I going to use factors of a times c that add to b? No, because there's no constant. So what I'm going to do instead is ask you, what do these two factors have in common? They have a 2 and they have an x. That leaves you. Very good. So if you set both of those equal to 0, what's going to make those 0? 
Zero and four, so it's B. Now, if you're getting confused on this one here, all right, I always think this is like the hardest one, but when you really understand it, it's the easiest one. Right? It's saying what number times two gives you zero? Well, the only number times two that would give you zero is zero. So once you get uh, older, this one starts to be easier than the other one. I factored. Otherwise, I'd have to use some other way to solve it. Oh, just so you know, I mean, I wouldn't write. I'd be done here. I know my answers are 0 and 4. But I'm writing out that, like, with the zero product property, if one of these is 0, Clarissa, then the whole thing is 0. So those are my two options. Okay, the last one. Now, I'll show you this using just proportions, right, putting it over 1. Okay, but I didn't do that for my work, but I'll show you just proportions. You get x squared minus 1 equals negative 2x plus 2. Does everyone see how I distributed that negative 2? Yes? I'm multiplying. You did this question on the SAT? Nice. Let's see if he did it both ways. All right. So then I see the x squared is positive, so I'm going to move these two guys over there. Let's get x squared plus 2x, and that's going to be minus 3 equals 0. If, you under, if you're not understanding how I'm getting these numbers, please ask me. Please raise your hand and say, how'd you get that? Neda, yes? Great. So do you see the minus 1 here? Yes? So when I move this 2 over with subtraction, I get negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. And do you see how it's a negative 2x on this side? When I move it over, it becomes positive 2x. So I'm just skipping steps. Right? I'm trying to show you, like, be efficient. You can do this. Skip the steps. If you can't, show all your work. All right? Now, I'm going to try to factor this. What are factors of negative 3 that add to 2? Very good. So positive 3 and negative 1. So what are my two answers? Not 3. Negative 3. Positive 1. But if you were to check your work, right, plug it back into the original, you would see 1 minus 1 is going to make 0 in the bottom. So who remembers what this answer is called? Very good. It's an extraneous solution. So this is not an answer. The only answer is negative 3. Now, the SAT was nice. They did not put an answer choice. I would have. I would have put an answer choice that said negative 3 and positive 1. Right? That wasn't an answer choice, All right, but I would have. To, I would have made this one negative 3 and 1 to get a lot of people to pick D. Okay, now, that's not the way I would have solved it. I would have factored this. What's this up here? It's dots. So that's x minus 1. We'll write an x first. x minus 1 and x plus 1 over x minus 1 equals negative 2. What crosses out? The x minus 1s, right? So you have x plus 1 equals negative 2. You move the 1 over with subtraction, and you get negative 3. Wow, that was much faster. You even missed it, Frank. It was so fast. Yes, I'm waiting, if you'd like.